Hi guys, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at how we can solve this problem where we, we have a picture where the foreground's exposed perfectly fine but because of the weather conditions or the fact that the difference between the exposure on the, the foreground or in this case the buildings and the sky was so different you end up with this burnt out sky that you can't really do much with. So what we're going to do is we're going to look how we can introduce a new sky and what we're going to do during the process of this is obviously create a layer mask to mask off the sky but we're also going to look how we can introduce a little bit of realism because a nice bright blue sky isn't necessarily going to match these buildings so the first thing we're going to do is I've got another picture here with some sky now this sky is in a different orientation on the picture we're looking at the camera's actually looking straight up whereas this one's obviously looking across the horizon so it will look a little strange but we can do something about that so I'm going to make a selection of this area using the rectangular marquee tool control C to copy over to our sky picture control V to paste and control T to bring up the transform handles now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit near the corner here on the transform handles and I'm going to rotate this around and I'm going to move it and I'm, it doesn't have to be exact but I'm just going to get so it's just over the buildings. Now this is where we can change the way the clouds look because at the minute they wouldn't look right like that at all. Um, but if we stretch this handle and we stretch the clouds out until it almost looks like a slow shutter speed picture where the clouds have gone all wispy and elongated because of your long shutter speed. Press return to accept that. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn that layer off for the moment what I'm going to do is grab our quick selection tool make sure I'm selected on the background layer and I'm going to run through the middle there because there's quite a lot of contrast in this picture the quick selection tool does a really good job of making the selection you know, we probably don't need to do too much there is a couple of areas here like here and there um, we can see where it's made too much of a selection on certain places and it's not selected in between here so what we're going to do is go into the refine edge tool and use the brush and we're just going to paint over any areas where it appears to have got a little bit lost um, with its selection um, if you just use this brush to paint over you're basically telling Photoshop to have another look at that area and perhaps be a little bit more stringent about what you're selecting now you can see on that area there it's deselected the area of sky between the two parts and there so it's, it's sometimes worth using this tool you can just sweep around the edges and tell Photoshop you know what you didn't quite get that right just have another look and see what you can do and to be honest in all fairness for such a complex task it does a pretty stand up job most of the time um, this picture is a little bit easier because it's, as we said before, it's quite high contrast. Um, so I'm just going to output this now to selection. So we've got a reasonable selection going on there. We can probably uh, spend a little bit more time uh, with a refine edge tool, or perhaps after go in and modify the mask slightly. But for the d for the purposes of this demonstration, I think that's perfectly good enough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn our layer back on for the sky, and I'm going to select our layer whilst this active selection is still going on I'm going to click create mask our selection has automatically created the mask for us so it's 90% there um, it looks pretty good the nice wispy clouds does make it look like the clouds are actually traveling across rather than an, a horizon type view it makes it look like you've used a long shutter speed which is always a bonus but it still doesn't sit quite right this building's quite dark, but the sky implies it's a really bright, clear day. Normally you'll get some kind of reflection within these glass windows. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come down to our sky layer, Control J, make a copy. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this layer mask so it's out of the way, so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I'm going to press Control T. 
and I'm going to get this sky I'm going to drag it all the way across the opposite way around and now I'm going to drag it back on to our building and what I'm looking to do is to get the clouds in a slightly different orientation to what they are in the sky just so it's not duplicated too much something like that's about fine and I'll accept that change now I'm going to zoom back in and I'm going to click on the layer mask of the previous layer uh, the sky that we replaced in the center now if I hold my control key and I click on the layer mask it's going to make that same layer mask active again now I'm going to click on the new layer that we've just put our sky for the building on hit the create mask we have a mask but it's in the wrong place it's the wrong way around so what I'm going to do is I click on the mask control I inverts the mask now we're going to change the blending mode for this this layer we're going to change it to overlay I'm going to take the opacity slider down do something around about there maybe now if we zoom in you can actually see there's a reflective quality of the sky on the buildings that might be a little bit too strong but to be honest I think it actually needs to be darkened down somewhat so what I'll do is I'll leave the opacity around about 45 percent so we'll look at making a layers adjustment to see if we can add a little bit more something to that if you're in Photoshop CC you could come to uh, the camera raw filter and just paint a bit of clarity and contrast over that it would probably solve the issue um, but we'll do it this way around for those of you who don't have Photoshop CC so I'm going to create a new levels adjustment and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this levels adjustment but I'm going to ignore everything else that's happening in the picture I'm only going to be looking at this part of the building so I'm going to get the midterms first off drop them down slightly See, just by moving the, the white and black points in the midtone slightly we've got a little bit more contrast so you can see the clouds starting to appear a little bit better I just flick that on and off all adjustment layers come with a layer mask so if we don't want the effect on the rest of the picture all we have to do is click on the layer mask make sure our foreground cover is set to black pick a brush make sure you're selected on the layer mask and I'm going to paint the effect out of the rest of the picture so there you have it very quickly and very easily we've replaced the sky if you do have problems with your selection um, if there's perhaps not as much contrast between the building and the sky you can use an adjustment la layer temporarily just to try and boost that contrast for you so you can make the selection you can always delete the adjustment layer afterwards so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift control alt and press E and that's going to give me a flattened copy of all of these layers right at the top of the stack um, at this point you could save it as a PSD file or you could save as and save a JPEG version of it and keep your PSD file or you could just flatten it and save it as a JPEG um, if you're a BECC member I will put the two pictures that have been used alongside the video on the website um, so you can download those and run along with the tutorial if you want to thanks for watching till the next time bye